Hey guys, Jonathan Solensky here with Long Range Tactics. Today we're going to be going over some of the details from one of the newest additions to the optics lineup for uh, PRS style matches, and that's going to be the Zeiss LRP S5. This scope comes in both 5 to 25 and 3 to 18, which is becoming a pretty common uh, magnification option for a lot of scopes on the market right now. Uh, but what sets this scope apart isn't going to be its magnification, all right? Like I said, those are pretty common. What sets this uh, scope apart is going to be a lot of the features they've decided to incorporate that they've kind of taken from a bunch of different markets and from their own research uh, and integrated into one optic. So the first thing you're going to notice about these is the oversized turrets. Everyone else is kind of switching or switched for a while down to like shorter, fatter turrets. Uh, but you can see that theirs are nice and tall. Uh, part of this comes from their style of shooting over in Europe. Uh, they shoot with gloves on every now and then. So they wanted their turrets to be big enough that you could get a hold of it while wearing gloves. The big advantage that you've got now, though, is as you can see, we've got multiple markings for each rev uh, for all your mill marks. So now when you're a rev over, you don't have to worry about trying to count or remember doing the math. Now, speaking of math, one of the things that makes this different than most of the scopes on the market is it's actually got a 12 mil revolution uh, for the mil variant of this optic. So I've got 12 whole mils before it resets back to zero. Now, part of this is because they have so much travel built into this optic. If you get the mil version, you've got 40.7 mils of elevation just within the optic itself. Then you've got their own Christmas tree reticle to add on top of that. That's a lot of holdover, especially if you end up using some type of canted base or canted uh, scope mount that lets you utilize all of that travel for just up elevation. Now, let's talk about some of the other features. One of the other features that they are very proud of is their illumination. So they've got an illuminated reticle for both their mill and MOA variants. Uh, but what's nice about this illuminated reticle is it's daytime visible even in a bright condition. Now, you can say, yeah, that's pretty common in some uh, other optics as well. But what sets this one apart is how crisp it is while still being daylight visible. A lot of other optics, once you crank that uh, illumination up to that max setting so that you can see it on a sunny day on a bright backing, it kind of blurs all together. Theirs remains nice and crisp. Now, the one downside to their illuminated reticle is they only illuminate the very center of it. Unlike other optics that illuminate the entire Christmas tree, this only illuminates one mil in each direction. So if you're doing mil holdovers and need illumination, it's not really gonna work out in your favor. But if you're dialing, it's a great option and gives you a crisp red reticle uh, whenever you want. Another nice feature they've added for the illuminated reticle is a gyroscopic sensor. So whenever the optic is pointed at a 45 degree angle or greater up or down, it automatically shuts off your illuminated reticle. Now what this does is it gives you the benefit of saving the battery and you don't have to always remember to turn it off. As I'm sure most of you have run into just like I have, forgetting to turn off a reticle can be a little bit frustrating when you show up at the range or maybe in the middle of a hunt, you go to turn on your illuminated reticle and the battery is dead because you forgot to turn it off. Now you have to fumble to take off a cap, get a new battery out of your pack, throw it in and do all that probably in a situation where you didn't need to have that much movement or time wasted. The benefit to this, even if you do forget to turn it off, it's going to turn itself off as long as that rifle is stationary pointing a 45 degree angle up or down. The other nice thing about the illumination turret is how you turn it on. So some scopes, it'll be on the number zero. That's your off setting, right? But it's relatively easy to rotate that ring. It turns to number one or maybe number 11 if it's going the opposite direction and that reticle gets turned on and the battery gets drained. For this one, you actually have to pull that turret out and here it clicks and that's your on. When you want to turn it off, you're just going to push that turret back in. Very definitive, not a very easy thing to have done to your optic by accident versus rolling that turret. So let's go back to the turrets for a second. So one nice thing about these turrets is they have a built-in zero stop. So what that means is once I float that turret to zero, it automatically sets my zero stop right where that's at. So I don't have to mess with an internal turret or a locking ring or anything else to set that zero stop to where I need. Now, disadvantage to this, it doesn't give you that negative 0.5 or a couple of tenths uh, that some scopes give you for your zero stop, where you can go below zero before hitting. Uh, so it just stops it right on zero. Now, another downside to these 
is their windage and elevation turrets use different size set screws and they're both smaller than what you would typically find uh, in an optic set or in a tor uh, torque set, right? So your elevation turret takes a number eight torque bit and your windage turret takes a number six torque bit. Now this is fine if you remember to bring the tool kit with you or the tool wrench with you that comes with the optic itself, unlike I did. I showed up thinking my fixed sticks were gonna be enough uh, and they only went down to a, a size number 10. So I didn't actually have the size I needed to be able to set my zero. Now, luckily I was able to borrow a set from somebody who had a number eight and I was able to set my uh, elevation turret, but I wasn't able to set my windage turret that day. Now, an advantage to their windage turret that made me uh, able to overcome this issue is it's a locking windage. So I was able to adjust my windage to where my zero needed to be, lock that turret down, and just do holds for the rest of the day, and I was able to still have a solid zero for that match. Now that we've zeroed it, let's talk about zero repeatability and consistency. A lot of people are worried that once they've got their rifle zeroed, that due to either the rings, the optic, or the rifle itself, that their zero is gonna shift or change every time they pull their rifle out. And this can be true to some extent, depending on the rifle. But for those of you that know me, you know I'm relatively rough on my equipment. I rarely use bags. I carry my rifle by the optic all the time, pick it up, set it back down by the optic, uh, and just lay it in the back of the battle wagon when I need to transport it. I do this kind of on purpose. I need to know that my equipment is able to be consistent under harsh conditions. If I sit there and baby my rifle every time that I go to use it, and then it gets knocked over off the bipods or falls off a tripod, now I'm gonna be in doubt whether my equipment is gonna be able to sustain that type of damage and still be consistent and able to shoot. Knowing how I've treated specifically this scope with their rings on my rifle, I know that if it does take a fall, I'm not gonna have any issues. I've been fairly rough on this scope for the last couple of months with this rifle and shot it at several matches. I've never had my zero shift, even as much of a 10. I've been very, very happy with this consistency. Now that we've talked about a little bit about the turrets and zeroing and all that, let's talk a little bit about glass. Zeiss is known throughout multiple industries as having some of the best glass on the market. Whether it's medical instruments, rifle optics, or binoculars or spotting scopes, they're known for having phenomenal glass quality, and the LRPS5 is no different. All right, I've never had an issue with seeing any haze, blur, uh, low light conditions, struggling to be able to see my targets, and I've shot this optic in less than ideal conditions, uh, in less than ideal position, and I've always had great now, the other thing that goes into glass, specifically with first focal plane rifle optics, is going to be your reticle. Now, they've come out with a couple of different reticles that they've worked from the ground up uh, in conjunction with some top-level shooters. For the mill version of this scope, they do have a Christmas tree type reticle. This reticle is pretty good, all right, especially for a first intro into the like action, uh, long-range type matches. As most of you know, we are a fairly particular bunch. Uh, as shooters go, right? So we've got very specific things that we look for in rifle scopes. And there's been other companies that have tried to break into the PRS market uh, with their own reticles that just haven't been up to the task. And so we don't see those optics anywhere uh, on the field of competitors. Now, if you're shooting a minute scope, uh, you're gonna be a little bit more restricted to only a hash reticle uh, because that's the one that they've designed around minutes. They do not have a Christmas tree type reticle uh, in minutes at this time. Now, one thing that's kind of common here with newer optics uh, is something called a break-in period, right? You've got your parallax, your magnification rings. They might feel a little bit stiff when you first get the scope. Now, that is true for the parallax adjustment on this optic. It is a little bit stiff and needed some time to get broken. In. But the magnification is really easy to adjust from day one, especially with the Zeiss throw lever that they add in that's built specifically for this scope, all right? So it has a little notch here uh, that kind of integrates with the built-in throw lever, which is more of a nub than it is an actual lever itself. But as you can see, super easy to adjust the magnification uh, without it needing to be broken in or anything like that. But like I said, the parallax is a little bit stiff when you first get it and it takes a little bit of break in time. It's got that same little nub, uh, kind of built-in throw lever that gives some assistance, but it could stand to be a little bit larger. Another feature on these turrets for the elevation turret that I've really come to enjoy uh, is what's called clicks and clunks. For those of you that have shot the Schmidt and Bender PM2, it was very common on that optic as well. There was an extra definitive click on the one mil markings. So each tenth of a mil had a nice little click, but on that one hole or two hole mil mark, 
it was a solid clunk. You could feel and hear the difference between a tenth and a full mil. They've replicated that in this optic as well. Not quite to the extent that Schmidt and Bender used to do it, uh, but it's still nice. So as you adjust your turret, you can hear and feel the difference when you hit each one mil mark. Now, I think they could stand to make that difference even more definitive, uh, especially in high stress situations while you're on the clock or maybe taking a shot on an animal. It, you might skip over that one mil mark and not feel the difference. You just grab on and adjust it, you're going to skip over it pretty easily. But that is a feature that I do enjoy and I'm kind of partial to. It's definitely a personal preference, uh, but I'm glad they added it to this scope. Now, another thing that Zeiss sent me with this optic is a set of their 34 millimeter precision rings. Now, for most of you that know, rings are a relatively important piece of that setup. If you're gonna drop this kind of money onto an optic, you need to be spending a fair amount of money and getting quality rings to mount that to your right. Now, I was really happy with these rings. They were easy to mount, easy to tighten down. I didn't have any issues. The rings even have an integrated bubble level. Uh, for those of you that know how important it is to keep your rifle straight up and down and not canted either way so that you've got another level that you can integrate even if you attach one to your scope maybe you have one built into your stock like i do here with my gray bow uh it gives you another level that you can compare to to make sure that you are plumb wherever position you're in. now i hope we've covered pretty much everything that you guys would have questions about outside of the specifications that you can find on zeiss's website about this particular op if you've got any other questions please leave a comment below or send us a message at Long Range Tactics and we'll try and get back to you with an answer to whatever that question may be. Until next time, get out and shoot.